We'll begin with a reading from the book of Proverbs, the concluding lines of the book of Proverbs describing a woman, a woman of valor. Aishas chayil mi yimtza verachok mi pnimi michra, botach bole bala v'shala lo yechzar, gula sutov l'arakol mechayeha. A woman of valor who can find far beyond pearls is her worth. Her husband's heartfelt trust is in her, and he shall lack for nothing. She bestows good upon him and never harm all the days of her life. King Solomon concludes, Her children arise and praise her. Her husband and he lauds her. Many daughters have accomplished well, but you surpass them all. Grace is false and beauty is vain, but a woman in awe of the Lord, she should be praised. Give her the fruits of her own hand and let her deeds praise her in the gathering places. We are here in this place gathered to pay our respects and give honor to Helen Rothman whose Hebrew name was Chano Rachel Bas Abraham. Helen was a woman that King Solomon beautifully describes as someone who would be praised in the gathering places and seeing all the people gathered here today, something that she surely deserves because in many ways she surpassed them all and she surpasses us all. She was a role model in our congregation at Heights Jewish Center. She was a role model to those who knew her, close friends that she developed in the shul in the congregation, and people who admired her as a mother, stepmother, grandmother, great-grandmother. And I found out recently, Ingrid told me yesterday, I was shocked. I always knew Helen she had an accent She's from Romania. So I just asked, where was your mother born? Expecting to hear the name of a city I couldn't pronounce. But the city's pronounced Philadelphia. <laughs> I'm like, what? How is this even? <laughs> so Ingrid explained she was here. And she was, you know, as we all, an illegal immigrant, her and her family. She was sent back, you can imagine sent back to Europe and then was there and then only came back afterwards with married and with one child and then their second child born here in Cleveland here in the United States but she definitely had a you wouldn't have known she was from Philadelphia because she had that old world sense of of reverence and dignity and I'm reminded of a uh, passage that our rabbis comment when they comment that our forefather, the forefather of the Jewish people, Jacob, that when he left Be'er Sheva, where he had lived, to go and get married, and the Torah says, he le after it already describes that he left Be'er Sheva, again the Torah repeats that he left Be'er Sheva. So our rabbis ask, why does it, re we know, he left, he moved. Why does the Torah have to repeat this sentence and tell us that he left? So our rabbis say, this teaches us that when a righteous person leaves a place, something happens. Because when a righteous person is in a place, that righteous person is the glory and the dignity and the shine of that place. 
And when the righteous person leaves that place, that glo glory has left that place. Dignity has left that place. That glow has left that place because this righteous person is no longer here. And all the years that I and the people, you know, in our congregation got to know Helen, she was most definitely the dignity and the glow and the honor of that place. She exuded it wherever she went. The close friends that she, the friendships that she developed, and I see a number of the close friends here know as well as, of course, her children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren know that that quiet dignity, that piety that is not overbearing, but that, that is quiet, that is gentle, that is beautiful, a smile she exuded to the people that were in her life is something that has left, and we feel that it has left. Helen was someone who adored her family. I remember visiting her after her son passed away. And she had also, at, even at that time, this beautiful dignity about her, even as she was in mourning for a child. And when she would, and the amount of study, her devotion to her Jewish religion was powerful and palpable, but also was one of where there wasn't a single iota of, you know, that any sanctimony or any holier than thou. She was just quietly and reverently devoted, not just to the prayers and her connection to God, but also a constant drive to learn and to study more. Something that she developed with the friends she had in Shul, close friend who passed away a few years ago, uh, Maya Angart. I often would think of Maya and Helen as, you know, the two tzidkanios of our shul, a tzidkanis, a tzadikas, like a, a righteous woman, like in, exactly in the model of what King Solomon here describes. When Jacob left his parents' home to travel for what would be 22 years, he left good people behind. His parents were also righteous people, obviously. Yitzchak, Avinu, Rivka, Imenu, Isaac, and Rebecca. And yet, when Jacob left, there was a void. And I can't help but think, as we are here, saying goodbye to Helen, that we have some sort of responsibility to fill that void. Because there are people who create an impression an impression is an important thing because it's created without even having to speak to someone. They just stand there and you know they're leaving the they, that they're they're le they're leaving an impression. So that when they leave, as our rabbis say, that impression goes away. So why did the rabbis say that? Just to make us feel bad that when a righteous person leaves a place, the, the glory and dignity of that place leaves as well. No, I think what the rabbis were saying is that if someone has left a place and that impression, that glory and dignity and glow has left, then it is the responsibility of those who are left behind to do what they can to leave that impression as well. King Solomon's father, King David, wrote about this describing the negatives and the positive and this is this is what I want to leave here after we say goodbye to Alan and lay her to rest these are the thoughts that I want to have King David begins the book of Psalms by saying King David begins by describing the risks of being around the wrong crowd and exalting the virtues of someone who knows not to hang around with the wrong crowd. Saying, happy is the one who does not follow in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the path of sinners, nor in the company of the scornful. 
In besoras Adonai Chefto besoraso yega yaman belayla. Rather, what does this person do? This person finds delight in the Torah, in the law, and instructions of God. This is what he desires. And he thinks about the Torah day and night. This person will be like a tree planted by streams of water. They yield its fruit in season, whose leaf will not wither, and whatever he does prospers. And this is exactly what Helen did. She made a decision. This is going back over 30 years ago. She made a decision. 40? And of a powerful, beautiful, dignified commitment of developing close friendships. And as I think many of us know, of being that close friend to so many. in a way that did not detract from the tremendous amount of love and joy that she had for her own family, children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. She'll be sorely missed. And as we miss her, we have to find ways in our own lives of making a point of filling that void. Now we're going to be saying goodbye to her and lowering the casket considered one of the greatest duties and privileges in in Jewish religion to play a role to actually put her to rest in this way by filling in the grave as well so after we lower the casket as prayers are said we'll be filling in uh, the grave as well and conclude with uh, the Kelmale the memorial prayer yes. please before we do that I'm sorry to my Oma and to my mom. Mom, I'm so proud of you. You made sure her last year was full of love, support, and comfort, and Dad, you did okay too. <laughs> I hope Erica and I are half the daughters that you were, although I highly doubt it. <laughs> we'll see about it. To know our Oma is to love her. Everyone knows she was one of the purest souls, a true one of a kind. Oma never judged a single soul and welcomed anyone and everyone. She, she loved her family and especially the children very much. Even when she was in her last days, she would hear Emmy's voice and her eyes would open wide and she'd give her the most beautiful smile. Do you remember that, Toots? Yeah. Their relationship will be something I will treasure forever. As a little girl, I remember going with Oma to her woman's group to learn Hebrew. I think she was really hoping to convert me. <laughs> I still remember her prayers and would say them with her and it just made her so happy. Baruch Adata and everybody knows the rest. <laughs> I do too, but I'm gonna murder it, so I don't wanna say it. Um, when I told her I was getting married to Joe, she said, oh, I love him, but I got to say, I always thought you'd marry a Jewish man. <laughs> and I said, to which I replied, oh, mom, not Jewish. And she said, so she, I, like I said, she was always trying to convert me. <laughs> I truly hold her religion in my heart and appreciate all the culture she brought to my life. Oma's life was so interesting, there was never a dull moment. A few months ago, I was able to get most of it on a recording. At first, she was a little timid to share and said, I don't remember much. And 
but once she got started, she would say, oh, I remember this, and oh, listen to this. Like, it was always like such a good story. One day soon, my family will sit together with Samantha Shevitz and listen to those precious recordings. She is being laid to rest next to her husband, my grandpa Brett. He was sweet, kind, and loving, somewhat of a clown. <laughs> I wanted to share with you his proposal to our Oma. He wrote her a, a poem, and it just tells you how much he loves her. To Helen, my love for you knows no limit. I love you more and more each minute. I wish you health and a long life. I want to have you for, for my wife. You are the most beautiful woman I know. When I'm with you, my heart's aglow. In this world of turmoil, turmoil and strife, I want you for the rest of my life. You are so good and kind and sweet. My heart and soul lay at your feet. My love for you will never die as long as there is a sun in the sky. As long as there is a moon at night, I will try to my best to treat you right. I hope that this will help you see how much you really mean to me. I want you and only you. Without you, life would be very lonely. Oh, my love, Fred. So with that being said, she is in good hands. Back next to Grandpa Fred. I'm sure she's laughing. We love you, Oma, and you'll be missed and remembered fully. Live, laugh, love. That was our Oma. I'm going to lower the casket now and then begin.
expressed the wishes to participate. Any, any family or friend would participate. It seems to go though, I hold it. But sometimes people want it. Yeah. Okay, good. So I'm going to finish to the din and then you'll already say Kaddish and then I'll say the Kaddish. Okay. I'm going to go Thank
was covered. Then it would fill the whole thing in. But after the placement of the cover on the pole, so the helm is well protected. We recite something known as the Tzidukha Din, which is Hebrew for the idea that we accept God's judgment, whatever it may be. When God decides that a life has come to an end, then we accept that judgment. With the words, Lahagid ki yashar Adonai tsuri v'lo avlo We wish to relate and declare that God is just, my rock in whom there is no wrong. Adonai no son v'adonai lakach, yihi shem Adonai mevarach. Lord has given, the Lord has taken. Blessed is the name of the Lord. V'hu rakum yechaper avon v'lo yashkis v'hibol l'hoshivapo v'lo yoyir kol chamaso that even when we are faced with death, we understand that God is merciful and forgiving, and even death is not a true destruction, because God makes sure that the souls of the righteous live on forever. And now we conclude with a prayer, the, the Kaddish prayer, in which we acknowledge that God will bring a successful conclusion to all of human history. God, full of compassion, who dwells on high, grant proper rest under the sheltering wings of your presence. In the lofty levels of the holy and pure, who shine as the brightness of the heavens, unto the soul of Hanarach of Abraham, Helen Rothman, who has gone to her world, and for whose memory we pray. May your rest be in the Garden of Eden. May the Master of Compassion bring her under the cover of his wings and bind her soul in the bond of life. May the Lord be her heritage. May she rest on her resting place in peace. And let us respond, Amen. Amen. That concludes the service. Thank you all for paying your respects to this wonderful woman.